Chef Martin here in the Thermoworks Demo Kitchen today with Maciek Zarowski from Grillin' with Dad. Today we're going to be cooking up some pork belly uh, two different ways. Maciek, what are we gonna do? Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Uh, and yes, we got this beautiful pork belly and we're gonna be doing it two ways. So we're gonna cut it right down the middle and half of it, we're gonna smoke low and slow whole, okay. uh, making it into shredded pork belly tacos. If we have to, I guess that sounds okay. I know, tacos, right? Like who wants tacos? Uh, yeah, man. And then the other half, we're gonna cube up to make into pork belly burn ends. So Love little it. squares of deliciousness, pork belly melt in your mouth, tossed in barbecue sauce. It's gonna be fun. That sounds amazing. All right, so what do we do first? What do you want to do? How do we get going on this? All right, so usually when you pick up your pork belly, right, it's a pretty big slab. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I like to do it two different ways, right? I mean, you can cube this whole thing up uh, to make it into burn ends, but it's just a little bit too much. So I'll say, yeah. Adding a little variety is always nice. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just cut it right down the middle. Uh, and this piece, and they're all about, you know, about the same size. So this piece will do for the uh, shredded uh, pork belly taco. So we'll just leave that as is. Okay. And then this piece, we're gonna cube up to make our pork belly burn ends. So, one thing to keep in mind because it's very fatty, right? It's a lot of kind of connective tissue inside. Yeah. Uh, you want to keep the size the same when you cube them up. Okay. And then the other thing to remember is the cubes are going to shrink right. because they're cooking. So, right, I like to keep the size mm -hmm. about an inch, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. And so a little bit bigger than you want for a bite. Right, yep, yep. Right so now. a little bit more because as they shrink, they're going to be the perfect kind of bite size. Got it. Uh, treat, so All and right. again, the main thing to remember is to keep the size the same, right? They're gonna cook at the same time that way. They're not gonna overcook or undercook if they're the same size. All right, great. So again, just roughly about an inch, inch and a quarter, and we'll just slice, all right? Make a nice. nice little strip of pork belly. So we'll do the same with the rest. So if your local market just sells um, strips of pork belly, you can definitely do this. You can buy those strips pre-done and just finish cutting them into cubes, huh? And then go like that. Exactly. You don't necessarily need to buy a whole slab if that's gonna be uh, inaccessible to you or too much for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, a whole slab like this is a lot of, a lot of pork belly, so. It is a lot, it's, it's great. It is. <laughs> Who doesn't like pork belly? I mean, it's, uh. for those that don't know, I mean, it's, it's basically bacon, right? It's uncooked, uncured bacon. I mean, this is where bacon comes from. So yeah. if you like bacon, you're gonna love yeah, this. Yeah, like, and you got that nice classic bacon pattern there, nice streaky, yep. good barbellization, yep. good stuff. Uh, and then the other thing to note, so this is skinless pork belly. That's right. Uh, if you do skin on pork belly, it's a little different method. Uh, they're a little harder to get, so we won't get into that too much. Most local stores sell these uh, without the skin on. So. Right. so we've got our strips. Now we're gonna kind of turn them around and cut them the other way to make, make the cubes. Flip these guys over. Just do two at a time, and again, trying to make them about the same size, so about an inch, inch and a quarter, right, four. Oops. So yeah, we got some nice, nice squares there. Yeah. Same size on each side, wonderful. Already making me hungry. Oh, they're gonna be they're gonna be something special. Little pillows of uh, porky goodness. Yum. Oh, yeah. So as I'm cutting these, the the cooking method. So because and you can see it on these right, a lot of uh, a lot of fat um, mm -hmm. that needs to render down. So yep. we're gonna be cooking these kind of low and slow, uh, indirect on the on the smoker at about 250 degrees for a couple hours. So that'll give the fat plenty of time to render down. Right that connect, connective tissue to break down, to really make it, you know, melt in your mouth, delicious when they're, uh, when they're done. Fantastic. All right. Okay. Okay. So, so our pork belly is cubed up. Now we're going to put it in our foil pan. Okay. And we're gonna season it up. So for this cook, uh, we're going with a Meat Church Holy Gospel. It's a good all around, all purpose barbecue rub. Uh, it's not too sweet, it's got a nice little kick to it, which will go great with the pork belly. Um, good. So again, just a nice 
even coating of the seasoning. And we'll just keep tossing these, flipping them, making sure that... Everybody's getting fair play. Right, you wanna make sure all the sides are coated since they're gonna be hit with that smoke on all sides. You wanna make sure the rub is, uh, is evenly distributed. We're not looking for too heavy a coat, is that right? Are we looking, how, how, how heavy is easy? Yeah, really definitely not too heavy. Uh, you just want a nice, even, even coat. You don't want to kind of cake on the seasoning too much because then as it cooks, it's going to create these kind of tough spots from the rub, so. Gotcha. Just a nice, even, even coating. So the first part of this cook uh, is going to be having the pork belly on the, on the smoker indirect at that 250 degree temperature range. And we're gonna leave it on for about three hours or so. Okay. Uh, we're gonna keep an eye on the internal temperature of the belly, uh, which will be super important. We want it to hit about 190, 195 internal okay. uh, after that three hour cook. Uh, that'll ensure that they're nice and soft, very tender. Uh, and then when they hit temperature, we'll take them off the grill, put them back in the foil pan and toss them in barbecue sauce, put them back on to finish. Okay. So barbecue sauce is gonna add that richness, that sweetness that we're looking for. That sticky kind right, of. Right, that yeah, stickiness uh -huh. that we know barbecue for. And then we'll put it back on the grill to let that kind of sauce caramelize, reduce a little bit more, and really, really kind of just bake into the uh, the pork belly. And so you say we're gonna monitor the temperature on these. We're gonna use the new X4 for that, right? We sure will. And that's one of the awesome things about it with the four different channels. Uh, we're gonna put the probe in a couple different pieces ensuring that they're cooking evenly and coming up to temperature at the same time. Not just one freak right. cube is in there exactly. at such a temperature or something. Exactly. So. so that's a nice even coat there. We got some good seasoning and yeah. Yep, exactly what we're looking for. So these guys are ready for the grill. All right. What are we doing with this guy then? For our whole piece of pork belly, uh, we're gonna treat it similarly to the cube. So we're gonna season it again with the Meat Church Holy Gospel, but this guy we're gonna cook whole on the grill. Again, indirect temperature, the 250, 275 degree range. Right. Also, we're gonna stick a probe in it to uh, monitor the internal temperature. Okay. Uh, and after about three hours, as the pork belly uh, burn ends are coming up to temperature, we're gonna remove this guy off the grill as well, put it in the pan, cover with foil and finish it that way, ensuring that it gets super tender and shreddable, right? Because so we're gonna basically braise it in it. So exactly, it's like exactly, yeah, we're gonna, you know, the, the point of this one is we wanna shred the meat that you see right there on the bottom, right? So the fat's gonna reduce, that connective tissue is gonna break down, and when it's ready, we're gonna shred the meat and make tacos with that. Fantastic, can't wait. And a nice, so seasoning wise, again, similar to what we did with the cubes, just a nice even coat. And because this is only getting on on two sides, basically, it's not going all the way around the edge of every single piece. It's going on a little thicker, it looks like, because exactly. we can afford just a little bit more exactly. on the surface that way. Nice shake technique. Yeah, you know, one thing when you season kind of bigger cuts like this, seasoning high helps get you a nice even distribution of the rub, and then you just kind of shake off the excess. Again, you don't want to cake it on too much, because then it'll create kind of tough spots as it cooks, but kind of shaking off excess rub, and this guy is ready. All right, fantastic. Should we head out to the grill then? Let's do it. All right. All right, uh, Machik, here we are outside. We've got our, our uh, belly ready to go. Guide us. All right, so the pork belly's been sitting at room temperature for about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, it allows that rub to start absorbing into the meat, uh, pulling out that moisture so it's nice and, nice and wet already. Yeah. Uh, the egg is sitting at about 250, 275, and we're using the uh, new Smoke X4 to help us monitor the temperature of the grill. Great. So we're gonna go ahead, put the pork belly, the cubed up pork belly on the first grate, and then we'll do the whole slab on the second grate and okay. cook both of those at the same time. Nice, basting it with its own self. That's kind of. right. All right. All right, so we've got our cubes, so we're just gonna arrange them on the, uh, on the egg. You know, you wanna leave a little bit of room between okay. them. So we're not suffocating them. Right, right. just want to let that airflow give some space to go around so they'll cook evenly. Uh, we've got our grate probe right in the middle. So this will let us know exactly what the uh, grill temperature is. Do we need to like worry about like fat side up or anything on these or does it matter at all? I, I don't really worry about that. Okay, great. Because that fat's going to reduce down anyway, so. Okay. 
Nice. Get this thing loaded up with that pork belly. Mm-hmm. Okay, a couple more. Okay, so we've got our cubes. All right. So our pork belly's on. So now, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we're gonna keep an eye on the internal temperature uh, of our pork belly cubes. So we're gonna use the two probes. You know, let's stick one in that guy right there. Yep. That looks really good. Just right there down the middle. Making sure this is going over the bridge of the, of the diffuser plate. Exactly, you don't wanna burn that cable. Because even though it's low and slow, there's some serious heat that comes up the sides of these. Sure is. So that's gotta go through there. Yep. Okay. So we'll set that there, and I'm gonna plug these into the top two ports on this, okay? Okay, perfect. There we go. Okay, so our first level is set. Now we're gonna use this additional grate and we'll put this right on top. Just squeezing it right here on the grate. Okay. Right. And now we'll take our whole slab of pork belly nice. and we'll put this right on top. Okay, so this will kind of self-base the burn ends as the fat renders down from our whole slab. So we'll put another meat probe in this uh, top piece right there in that thick part. Yeah. Like that. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that into the third port. Perfect. Make sure it's running in the right direction. And close that down. Close that down, yep. So we've got our pork belly and the uh, big green egg. Uh, cooking time-wise, it'll take about three hours okay. for that belly to reach about 190 degrees internal. We've got our temp probes in the belly, so we'll keep an eye on that. And we're also using the uh, Billows temperature controller for the grill itself. So right. that probe that was sitting right in the middle is telling the controller kind of the fan needs to speed up or slow down to maintain our 250 to 75 range that we're looking for in the pork belly. Uh, and then we've also got our remote receiver, which tells us exactly what the temp is at on the uh, pork belly. So we'll know when it hits that 190, we'll come back and continue on with the next step. All right, sounds great. Yeah, while the pork belly's in the big green egg, we're gonna prep our salsa for the tacos. So this is called an ash salsa, and it's one of the simplest, quickest recipes for salsa that I know. And the cool part about it is we're gonna cook it right on the charcoal, right? That's All right. why the name, ash salsa. So. Uh, very, very simple uh, ingredient. So we've got tomatillos. So what you want to do, just peel uh, that outer layer off from the tomatillo and just toss these guys right on the hot charcoal. And what we're looking for is we want these guys pretty much black all okay. the way around, right? right. So they're going to get nice and soft. And the char, the charcoal is going to create amazing flavor for our salsa. So just all right. we're going to toss about four of these guys on. Four of those. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then we've got whole jalapenos. Oh, yum. Uh, again, same thing, just right on the charcoal. So and if you don't like flavor, you could de-seed those first, huh? Right. Right, right. gotcha. Right. Uh, and whole white onions. So All these right. we just cut right down the middle in half. Uh, and we'll do the same thing, just get it get it softened up, get some color on the onion. Yeah, so you didn't take the skins off those, we're basically just gonna burn the skins yep, off, huh? exactly. Okay. Uh, and then we have some uh, garlic cloves. Okay. So for these, uh, we're gonna roast the garlic, but you know because they're so small, it'll be hard to kind of pick yeah, them from the from don't the charcoal. Lose them. So make a little foil packet. Okay. Just put the charcoal in the foil. We'll add a little uh, oil to this. You can okay. use uh, olive oil. This is uh, grapeseed oil, I think. Okay. Just to get them nicely kind of coated in the oil. Make a foil packet. So you're kind of gonna be frying them in there, yep. in essence. And then just put it right there again on the uh, charcoal. Nice. And one last ingredient is tomatoes. So we've got these uh, sweet cherry tomatoes. Okay. You can use whole red tomatoes, Roma tomatoes. Really anything works. Uh, bigger tomatoes you can toss right on the coals. Uh, these little guys are also gonna make a little foil packet. Okay, great. So just a handful of tomatoes. Uh, I'm not gonna be using any oil because these are very juicy inside, so right. the juice is gonna come out anyways. I'll make uh, a little, and, and the foil are also right going to help kind of keep all that juice together so we don't lose that. Gotcha. So, all right. So that's there it for go. our veggies. Uh, now we're just going to keep an eye on these, turn the uh, tomatillos, you know, every minute or two just to get okay. that nice color. Should I get those to turn right now? Do you yeah, think? let's take a look at them. Like, oh, yeah. That's Perfect. wow. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. That's fantastic. Yep. So that's exactly what we're going for. Uh, tongs are long tongs are definitely necessary for definitely, this. Definitely. Perfect. Yep. So same thing with the uh, jalapenos, just keep flipping them over, get them nicely charred yeah, up. That's, that's, that's Again, beautiful. that char is going to create all the flavor that we're looking for in this uh, in the salsa. 
So this is going like super, super fast. Yep. Because we're probably at like over 1500 degrees in there. Yeah, this is very hot charcoal. You can see it's all red, nice and glowing. So this takes just a couple minutes to so, get it to where we need it right, to be. Let's move that guy up here a little bit. I'm gonna hand the, I'm gonna hand the wheel over to you. Yeah, all right, there we thank go. You, thank you. Yeah, you'll see. So the one thing with tomatillos is they're pretty tough when you get them. Having them on the charcoal and that heat will soften them up. Um, so not only do you get the flavor from the charney outside, but they get nice and soft and tender for the uh, salsa from the heat. Fantastic. Oh, they smell amazing too. Yeah. Yeah, I love the smell of uh, charred tomatillos. So get a nice and even cook on these. Perfect. So after these guys get all charred up, we'll just throw all this into a blender. We'll let a couple other ingredients season it a little bit and our salsa will be ready. Fantastic. So we're doing this um, side by side next to our other cooker. Um, could we, if, if I only have one grill, could I still do this? Uh, would I just, while the other stuff's resting or something like that? Yeah, definitely. So that's what I do at home usually is once my pork belly's done, I'll just remove the uh, plate setter from the big green egg, expose the charcoal and just do the exact same thing on the grill okay. while the pork belly's resting. All right, fantastic. So oh. just keep an eye on the garlic. Yeah. If any of the oil leaks out, you can see it starts flaring up. So it just kind of move indeed. it, move it over a little bit and let that continue cooking. We'll flip the onion as well. Get that bottom, bottom get side that face charred. charred up. Yep. And again, keep flipping the tomatillos. Yeah. So this is, this is kind of what you're going for. It's still a little tough. So I'll leave okay. them on for a little bit longer. So I've done things like this before uh, where I've just cooked the peppers, but I love the idea of cooking all the ingredients in here to get that, 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 that real crank up on the volume of the flavor. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, as well as everything yeah, else. It's my, it's my absolute favorite way of making salsa. Uh, not only is it easy, it's fast because the charcoal is so hot. Yeah. Literally just takes a couple minutes. You don't even have to chop the onions. Yep. Throw them all like this. Yeah. Because we're going to throw it on the blender at the end anyways, it's all going to come together nicely. Okay, okay, so these guys are looking really nice. So you can see nicely charred all the way around. So we'll pull these, uh, pull these out. All right. Oh man. Yeah, right. Yikes. <laughs> okay, let's get the onion. Oh, it smells so good. Ooh. Pull the garlic, garlic packet. and our and tomatoes. tomatoes. Our veggies are looking great, by the way. So all we did is uh, we just cut up the stems from the onion and from the jalapeno. Okay. We're leaving them all charred up as they are. So we'll just throw everything in our blender. We'll do our jalapenos, our onions. Uh, and again, depending on the level of heat that you like, you can always de-seed the jalapenos. That's where the heat is coming from. Yeah. So if you like it a little more milder, you can always just slice them right down the middle and uh, remove the seeds. But we're bringing the heat today, so we're leaving them as they are. All right, so here's our garlic. You can, I mean, it smells unbelievable. Nice yeah, and soft, so we'll just toss that in as well. We'll toss our tomatoes. Those are, a lot of those have burst in there. Yep. And again, the tomatoes are just gonna cut through that, you know, tomatillo. Tomatillo's a little bit, uh, it's tart. Yeah, the tomatillo's a little bit more tart, so the sweetness of the tomato is gonna cut nicely through that. Uh, then we're gonna squeeze about two limes right in there. So two halves of a lime. Actually, let, me get, yeah, let me get yeah. Okay. Let me grab the one. I think yeah. Two so the limes, gotcha. yeah the lime is uh it's gonna get that kind of nice zing to it you know that we're yeah. looking for. It's gonna play nice against that char too. Yep. And then we'll do about a bunch of cilantro so. Just throw it whole right. like this, a little bit more. All right. Okay. Nice pinch of kosher salt. Love it. And a dash, about a teaspoon, two teaspoons of uh, cumin. Okay. Okay. All right. And a little bit of olive oil. All right. Hang on. One I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. Salt. A couple glugs of that. Yeah, just go. a little bit of olive oil, and this thing is good to blend. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. 
how smooth do you like your salsa? Yeah, so it's again a personal preference. Uh, you know, if you like it a little bit more smoother, obviously let it go longer, but I think that looks pretty good so far. Yeah. So you can just give it a little mix and it's, you know, it's nice and liquidy. It's got a nice, nice consistency. What do you think? Mmm, that's good. No, I think that's a great place right there. Yeah. Nice and hot, good flavor. Oh, that's, that's right on the money, I think. Yeah. Yeah, always be sure to taste it. You can always add the seasoning, add more mm. salt. Yeah. Uh, cumin, you know, whatever it needs. But I think this is... Uh, Everything is in a good this place is really there. Good, yeah. All right, sweet. Salsa accomplished. All right, Machek, looks like our pork's come up to temp. What happens now? So the second part of this cook will be to uh, put the pork belly, the cubes and the whole piece in a pan, add some liquid, some other ingredients to braise it and get the uh, cubes super soft and toss them in barbecue sauce. Yum. So let's go ahead and I'll do that All now. Right. Let's take a look. Oh, Ooh, good heavens. Man. So the color on this you can see is just absolutely beautiful. That's from the smoke, from the rub that we used. Uh, the cubes are nicely browned all the way around. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Same with the, uh, with the uh, pork belly slab on top. So. Yeah, let's take the probe out and go ahead, put that whole pork belly. That way. In the pan. One of those ways is gonna fit. Yep, perfect. So the other thing that we're gonna do to help this braise even more, because again, the, the, the goal for this whole slab is to shred the meat right. and reduce the fat even more. So we're gonna a little bit of, add a little bit of a braising liquid. We're gonna go with the lemonade. You can do a lemonade okay. or an apple juice. You know, both of those pair really nicely with pork. We'll give it a little bit of sweetness, which it should, uh, should finish up nicely. All right, nice. So we'll add our lemonade, uh, you know, maybe a, a cup at most, not, more, not much more than that. You have to remember the fat's gonna continue rendering down uh, adding more liquid to the pan. So this is just okay. for a little extra extra flavor, a little more braising liquid. All right. Okay. So we'll take our foil, we'll cover this pan up. And we'll want a nice tight seal on there because we're trying to keep this steam in, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is, this will help it steam and braise in the pan. So just get it nicely sealed. And then once ready, this will go back on the grill. Okay. But before we do that, let's prep the uh, cubed okay. up pork belly as well. All right. So same idea. We'll throw these guys in our pan. All right, and and you were right. They have shrunk considerably. Yeah, so they're more of a bite-sized piece now from what they were before. And that's again all that fat that was rendering down while these guys were cooking. Yeah, and. They've got some nice brown toasty edges on there. This is looks, I mean, I want to eat this now, you oh, know, yeah. but. And these are, I mean, you're more than welcome. People are more than welcome to try and, you know, uh, eat them as they are, but they're only going to get better from now on, so. Oh, they're singing. I can hear them sizzling oh, yeah. and singing. Perfect. All right, there we go. Okay, so this is uh, in the pan. Let's add our other ingredients. So first thing, we're gonna add our barbecue sauce. Uh, what okay. I like to do with these, if you use a, a spicier rub, uh -huh. go with the sweeter sauce. If you use a sweet sauce or a sweet rub, go with the spicier sauce just to kind of offset the two. Okay. Don't go sweet and sweet because then it's gonna be just too much, too much sweetness going on. So, and uh, it, we're gonna go heavy on the sauce again because we want them all coated nicely and then that sauce to reduce down and caramelize even a bit more, so. And just, just okay. like so. And we're also gonna add some brown sugar, so just a nice, oh, nice. even coating on top. So this will sweeten up a little bit more, uh, but brown sugar has its own kind of nice sweetness to it that will uh, complement the pork nicely. And as if pork belly wasn't rich enough, we're gonna add some butter. Hey! You know, hey. Double richness. I mean, I won't say no. Yep. So this is so this is a traditional way of making burn ends, right? This is why we're doing it this way, uh, and the right. flavor is just going to be amazing. And the last ingredient is going to be some honey. Okay. So again, just to make sure we twist this off. Yeah. So just a nice little coating of honey. Again, just to sweeten it up a bit and give it its own kind of specific taste. 
So with the brown sugar that we're adding and the honey that we're adding, we probably don't want to go too sweet on any rub or sauce that we have. Right, right? exactly. Yeah, if you go too sweet, it'll just be overpowering on the on the pork. Okay. So nice, nice kind of mid range is, is good for these. Okay, cool. Candied pork, yum. Yeah, it's not called uh, pork candy, you know, for no reason. <laughs> so again, we're gonna cover this up with foil, get a nice tight seal. Okay. Okay, and then oh, this will go back on the grill, same temperature under, you wanna keep it under 300. Uh, okay. Because you don't want the sugars uh, that are in the honey and the brown sugar to burn. Gotcha. And the sugar that's in the sauce. Anything higher than 300, you're under risk of just burning everything and, and you know, not okay. getting it to where it needs to be. Okay, so this will go on probably about an hour or so. That should be plenty of time to uh, thicken down that sauce, melt the butter, get it all nice and gooey and sticky. Get everything all tender. Yep, and get the pork nice and tender. Okay, I'll grab this uh, all right. grate for the top. <clears throat> mm, that doesn't quite fit over our, our rag. Okay. Is that okay? All, all right. right. Fine, yep. all and right. then we'll put the other pan right on top, close the lid, and let that cook. All right. See you in an hour. All right, they're done. Yeah, we pulled the uh, burn ends off the uh, of the smoker. Uh, we did pull the foil off for the last maybe 10, 15 minutes, let that sauce uh, thicken up a little bit more. And man, I have to say, these look, these look amazing. They smell even better. So yeah. let's pour these guys into this nice dish. Oh man. Lots of fat there, but oh, that's, yeah. uh, that's, that's kind of the point. There we go. That's a lot of porky goodness. Like a little bit more sauce yeah, there. there we go. That is thick. That is sticking up really nicely. Yeah, so these guys look great. You want to let them rest maybe 10, 15 minutes because these are scorching hot. You know that the yeah. bacon grease uh, is gonna is gonna burn you. But uh, but other than that, these are ready. So these, as far as eating these, uh, I mean they're good on their own as is. I also like these uh, the next day for breakfast if you're doing like oh, yeah? eggs or something. You know, you just warm a couple oh, of these up man. instead of doing bacon or sausage. Uh -huh. uh, so they're great oh, on that. Perfect. Um, and other than that, they're just they're just a fun little appetizer and snack to pass out when you have company. So we're over. gonna eat these while we finish, wait for the taco meat to finish. Then yeah, the whole slab is still cooking. Uh, it's gonna need another maybe thirty minutes or so. Okay. So we can uh, enjoy these uh, before we dig into that. No problem. I will enjoy these then. See you in a little while. All right, Machek, we're in the home stretch now. We've finished cooking the pork belly. It's come mm -hmm. to temp. Should be nice and soft. We've got some tacos or some tortillas that you've grilled up. Yeah. Let's go. Let's see how this thing is looking. So again, this was sitting on the grill for about another hour and a half in the pan with that uh, braising liquid getting it super tender. So, ooh, man. That is a lot of lot of rendered fat in there. Look at yeah, that. So this thing, this thing looks awesome. Great color, a lot of liquid. So this is the braising liquid that we added plus the additional fat that rendered down from the, uh, from the pork belly. So this should be shreddable. Uh, I like using my hands. Just make sure you wear uh, liners or thicker gloves because this will be super hot. Right. It is baking grease after all. So you can just grab it. You know, you can see, so the fat sides on top, meat sides on the bottom. I can see that already pulling apart. All right, so there, if yeah. you grab it, it should just start pulling, pulling apart, right? Just nice, very juicy still. So this isn't like a pork shoulder, it doesn't really you know, pull apart, it kind of shreds like this. Okay. Which is uh, which is what you're looking for. And again, just pulls pulls away. So basically you're pulling off like a, a, a muscle layer or a fat layer at a time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You just want to kind of do it in sections and just, and just shred it up like so. So let's shred this up and make our tacos. I cannot wait. And you can leave it in bigger chunks, doesn't have to be super fine. Mm -hmm. You know, something like these, like these bigger pieces. And you can see the nice smoke ring on it. Yeah, beautiful smoke from ring. The, uh, from the smoke part. You can just leave this in the juice there. It'll stay juicy and, and moist. And yeah, that's what I do. So I'll usually shred this up, uh, just mix it then with the juice and leave it in the pan. Uh, this can definitely stay for a, for a while too. So it's great the next day and, you know, next right. couple of days. So you brought these really fantastic thin uh, Sonoran style tortillas. Um, these are fan. These are, these are really great. So um, 
any tortilla will do, right? A corn tortilla, a flour tortilla, whatever you can get your hands on. Yeah, really anything will work. Uh, I'm a big fan of these, these Sonoran style flour tortillas. A little different from the traditional flour tortilla. Mm -hmm. A little, little, have a little more chew to them. And they'll hold this meat very nice, even though it's super wet, very juicy. Uh, the tortilla is not gonna break apart. So let me move this out of the way a little bit. And we'll make, make a couple tacos. So again, a very simple process. So just take some of the meat, pile it right on the tortilla. It doesn't take very much meat for one taco. No, no, you want to, yeah, you don't want to load them up too much. Yeah. Uh, just enough so there's a nice... You want to be able to eat four or five of them. Right, <laughs> exactly. The more tacos, the better. So let me see, a couple more in this one. You can get some of the fatty pieces, some of the meat pieces, get a nice, nice combination, right? And then you can uh, put our salsa on top. So this is what we uh, made earlier. That is, oh yum. Oh yeah. Okay, now I like to add a little bit of a diced white onion on top, just to give it that extra bite uh, that you get from the, uh, from the onion. Yeah, man. Okay, and a squeeze of uh, lime juice for that extra zing. There we go, up high. Nice. All right, I think these guys are ready. Nostrovia. All right, cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh man. It's good. Pork belly is awesome. Very rich, very fatty. Oh, it's so tasty. Right? Yeah. And it's a uh, bacon and a taco. It's a bacon taco. Yeah. Bacon wishes it was this good. All right. Well, there you have it. Pork belly tacos, pork belly burnt ends, um, ash salsa, temperature control by Smoke mm -hmm. X4, um, and uh, meats by grilling with dad. This is Chef Martin from Thermal Works with Maychick, and have a great day. Yeah. Thanks so much.